Good morning, you guys. Uh, Monday morning's coffee and questions, even though we're filming this on Sunday. Full disclosure, we're filming on Sunday because I got some a bunch of stuff to do tomorrow, so we're filming on Sunday. But anyway, so uh, coffee and questions. So um, again, we want to just a uh, announcement. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the all the great comments on the seminars. Um, we got another one coming up um, in less than a week on Saturday. And then on the 18th, we still got two slots open if somebody wants to get in there on the 18th. So let us know on that. Um, all right, so today's question. It's going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to do a question. And then the second question is uh, actually going to be from the seminar that we did some little film. So I'm going to um, edit in that clip from, uh, uh, from the seminar the other day. So it was really cool and a really good question. All right, so today's question is from Dan. I'm not sure how to say the last name. Somatis. S-O-M-A-T-I-S. So sorry if I butchered that, Dan. Um, Dan asked, there are diamond files and cards out now. Uh, can they be used to sharpen router bits properly? So... Um, and I kind of went over this with Dad. So these are, uh, this is a set that we picked up the other day. I think these, this is a really cheap set that I think we just, I don't know if Dad ordered these or we picked them up at Harbor Freight. My hunch is we probably got them at Harbor Freight, but I don't know. It's been a month or so since we picked these up. Dad being a machinist um, from way back, he said he used these all the time in the machine shop. So they've been around forever. Uh, but now they have a little credit card uh, diamond infused credit card, fine and coarse and, and all of that, much like this. So uh, I talked to dad about it and dad said these could be used. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do a video, uh, probably a newsletter uh, upcoming where uh, dad's actually going to show you how you can, um, you can possibly sharpen your router bits with these. So my thinking had always been, and I really hadn't talked to dad about it, my thinking would be that I've seen these kind of things used on uh, on what, not our profile bit, but other profile bits, bits that are used in sharpener, uh, shapers or router tables where you take and, um, this is a, just a chamfer bit that we have. So you take and you would use this on the backside, on the inside of the flute. Is that showing up okay, Ben? Uh, so you would use it in here. You take the bearing off and then you would use it on the inside of the flute. Um, again, Dad's going to do a demo on this so, to show you guys, but uh, he also said they could, uh, they could possibly be used on our bits as well. So this is a, a used profile bit. This isn't what the profile bit looks like uh, brand new. I've sharpened this probably half a dozen times at least. So that's our profile bit, our 60-degree V-groove, which has got three flutes to it three edges, and then our 90 degree V groove. And you guys have seen these. But anyway, so they could possibly be used, uh, and even the credit card um, uh, the credit card files could possibly be used on this. So um, I, I guess to answer your question, Dan, uh, you know, I talked to, again, talked to Dad about it, and Dad said if somebody really knows what they're doing, they, they could be used. Um, would they be as good as being professionally sharpened with a diamond wheel? Uh, Dad said probably not, but they could just definitely um, lengthen the life of uh, if you're of your bits. Um, but he says you really have to know what you're doing. So uh, again, Dad's going to do a demo on that sometime in the next few weeks. So I'll stay on him about that because he tends to not want to be in front of the camera all the time. Um, but anyway, so that I, I kind of hope that answers the question and, and uh, keep watching and we'll be doing a demo on that sometime soon. Um, okay, I guess that's it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to watch a, an actual question. I'm going to answer a question on camera uh, from, uh, um, from some guys at the seminar. So uh, stay tuned for that and then I'll be back at the end for sign carvers of the day. So here you go. Fine. Hey, hi guys, we are live at, uh, well kind of live, at the seminar and uh, we're going to do some coffee and questions, but we're going to actually do it with live people, with the attendees, 
of the seminar. So somebody came up with this great idea. We have here Patrick, Patrick Coldblazer, and Bruce Peter. And they actually had pretty much the same question on how to carve that American flag the right way, not the way I did it to begin with. So let me put my coffee aside here. There is actually coffee in here. Everybody is witness, even though we're like in the middle of the afternoon. So here's what we got. When you're doing this, hopefully you can get in here, babe. When you're doing this layout pattern, you're actually going to go from carving inset to outset in a couple different places. Okay, hold so, on. You didn't ask what the question was. Oh, dang. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I'm jumping ahead of Yes, you are. What was the okay. question? The question was, <clears throat> when I picked a logo for my sign today, I picked a fish and an American flag, and I, ha I didn't have a whole lot of experience with the American flag. So, um, and once I picked it, we found out how difficult it was. Uh, of course, we had all kinds of questions, and uh, I think Eric should have probably talked me out of it, but I think we made it through. <laughs> and. Uh, but uh, yeah, we. So the actual question was. The actual question was, uh, how do we router the, the American flag on our sign? Okay. And make it come out where it's actually the right amount of stripes. Right. Like I screwed up on the first video that you guys all saw, everybody saw, and then I had to redo it because I had too many stripes in there. And all it's right. because of the now way the. Is that is that about right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So what happened was is when you're, you're going to make this outset, this line here is going to be inset, which I think actually, yeah, you did it, but did it. you kind of did it a little backwards because I wasn't there. So you're going to take your profile bit, that's the bit you're going to use after you've done your stars with the SC50, and everybody's seen that. So you're going to come up here with the profile bit, go around that, making this outset. This is going to be cut inset. And then, so you're going to stay to the outside of this line with the profile bit. But then, when you get to this point, you're not going to stay to the outside. You're going to jump to the inside of this line because, as was pointed out, the American flag, the top of the stripes are red. These are going to be red. And the bottom stripe is red. What the mistake I made on the original video is I stayed to the outside of this line all the way, and that was a mistake. But when I jumped to the inside of this line, making this the top of the flag, then you come around again. I'm kind of simulating with my profile bit coming down, staying on the inside of that line. But then when you get <laughs> drawn upside down, when you get to this part, you still want this to be outset, so you've got to jump now again to the outside of the flagpole and carving on the outside of that line. So that will give you the top, like these guys did, the top and the bottom end up being red when you do it that way. So you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red stripes, and then the, in between, we didn't have the white primer, so we just left a wood color. You've got six on the white stripes. Six and seven, that's 13. That's the way it's supposed to be. So I hope that kind of, kind of clears up. So just remember, you've got to jump from outside, outset to inset on this line here, and, and you'll be good to go. And that's pretty much it. Does, I mean, did that kind of explain it, guys? Is that the, the one thing that we did that helped is before we did our sign, we did a practice, practice board. Right. Me and Patrick both did practice and figured out our flaws. Yeah. The one thing on your, is you want to stop short below the uh, blue field. So you got room to get the flight pole in. Yeah, so, and that's one thing that I didn't make real clear too. Because this is going to be, you don't want to bring these lines clear to here because this is an inset line. You want to cut these flags off, or these stripes, excuse me, cut these stripes off a little bit soon and bring your line up here, cutting a little bit of those stripes off so that you have a solid flag pole all the way around. And then, of course, this is going to be outset so that you bring your line across here. Again, making this outset. So you're doing that, but you, again, you have to be real careful 
not to run into those uh, to those flat, uh, stars. So then you may have to cut a little bit of these off too. Kind of like what these guys did, if you look, see, it, it just, and that was my mistake because I didn't make it clear enough, but he's got that black line here, so he cut those flags off to make sure that he didn't run into those stars. And I don't know if the, the camera, yeah. those stars are gonna really even be show up in here. So it, it's a little tricky, it, even though it's a, a fairly simple image, it can be kind of kind of tricky, kind of complicated. Took me a while to figure it out. So anyway, hope that helps you guys. Uh, we're done with this question and- uh, we'll Move on to the next one. Like this? What was got, that? That's a Viking's horn. It's a Viking's <laughs> planet, so what does it sound like the horn from the, anyway. Okay. I gotta go. I, yeah. <laughs> Bronco <laughs> fan. Calling him home. So uh, thumbs up if you like this. Please subscribe if this was helpful for you. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, we're back. So I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, that interaction with me and the guys there at the seminar. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And we, we have some more coming up uh, later on. Um, where we ask some more questions so i'll kind of pepper those in here and there so uh first sign carver of the day kevin kiernan kurian kurian i think man i'm just butchering these names so this is a 12 by 12 it's some old barn wood and he torched it and then put three coats of uh, helmsman's bar urethane on it pretty cool look what? Turn it that way. This, this way? Yeah. It's a pretty cool look. Okay. Good job, Kevin. Pretty cool. Got an old rustic look, obviously old barn wood. And here's one from Peter Alvarado. This is his fourth sign ever, which is pretty cool. A lot of straight lines there. Is that about the right angle? Okay. Yeah, let me zoom in. Really a cool sign. Great graphics at the ends. The mixture of red and black always looks pretty cool. Hold on one second. Vic's still getting the hang of uh -huh. his new camera. Okay. All right. I think I got it. All right. Great job, Peter. For only your fourth sign, you guys are amazing me. The, the, quality of work that is coming out out of you guys uh, for just being brand new sign carvers pretty amazing anyway that's it for today you guys um again let us know if uh any of you want to get in on the uh the 18th seminar we got two spots left so uh it's 50 bucks and comes with all kinds of stuff free lunch free t-shirt all kinds of goodies vicky puts these bags together um and then uh Thanks for, uh, for liking, thumbs up if you like this, and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, we appreciate you guys watching, and we will, uh, we'll see you on Wednesday for Coffee and Questions. We'll have some more questions. So keep those questions coming, guys. If you have questions on stuff, keep them coming. Um, I want to help. So everybody have a great day, have a great week, and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.